Good evening. Uh, before we get into this podcast, a uh, few things. One, I reference a podcast that was meant to go up this week. It was meant to, but it didn't. The reason being, the footage died. We spent two hours talking about Star Wars video games. So in lieu of that, we recorded another one. Little did I realize the reason that they were corrupted was because I had no memory on my on my hard drive anymore. So that one corrupted also. This one is fine, apparently, so far. But uh, there was a slight mishap with the recording at the beginning in which uh, I am absurdly loud compared to the rest. So I'm going to be trying to equalize the volume. But uh, keep in mind, I'm going to be significantly louder than the others just for a little bit until it kind of evens itself out. Um, but yeah, you might, you might just hear some weird things going on with the audio. That is also my fault. So I shall talk to you guys soon. Hopefully see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the gamers throne podcast. As, uh, as always, we have our email underneath me today. Um, for anybody who wants to send in for a Q and a, uh, this day we do have a special, a special guest, uh, the love of my life. Um, <laughs> we have Ryan, who is Alex's brother, actually. Um, we have, we have Ryan Green, the only functional of his siblings. Wait, that is the best intro I've ever had. In my You're an asshole. Dude. <laughs> Did you expect any different? <laughs> Um, but we do it. We've we've got Ryan with us today uh, due to the fact that we want to base this um, a little bit around Final Fantasy. Uh, to be honest, uh, we did so during this week. We recorded two different podcasts. The one that you guys will be seeing, uh, well, actually, it would have been up a, a, a week ago from the time that you're seeing this one. Um, and we also recorded a two-hour Star Wars uh, one, as was also mentioned in that podcast. Uh, but we, well, I. Uh, somehow corrupted the footage. <laughs> um, it was it was two hours long. There was great content in that, and then there was a mad fuck up. Um, but uh, so in order to keep things fresh, and we're, because we're doing this the day after the last one, we're thinking we're going to base it around something that is very very close to all of our hearts, and that is uh, Final Fantasy. Yes, Jack. There is some news that we had. Would you want to jump on that first? Of course, yes, yes. Let us do that. I was just, I'm so excited about this new, well, not for good reason, but, uh, so you should, everyone should have heard of a game called Genshin Impact that adds everywhere, really big mobile game as well as on, you know, PC um, and uh, other main consoles. Uh, pretty much all of them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a triple A game. Um, that's for free, I believe. Um, and it ha it's a gotcha game, so it's heavy on the microtransactions. It does soft lock you in the game for in terms of leveling. Of course, you can power through it. It takes an immense amount of time. So, of course, you can spend money to speed up your progress. This has been one of the most extremely popular games out since Pokemon Go. Not more popular, but comparable. Um, so, I want to ask you guys a question. How much do you think it earned in one month? Because before we recorded, I told you, but I actually was very wrong. Very wrong as in your guesstimate was lower or higher? So, I didn't I say 60 million? You said 35. 35? Oh, it's much higher. Much higher? Shit. Jeez. Wow, okay. Um, well, I, I suppose if... If you if you said around sixty just then, I'd say about eighty million. Hmm. About one billion. <laughs> uh, spoiler. <laughs> just throw that at me. <laughs> just in case. What do you think? Um. Oh, I'd say about hundred and fifty million. Ooh. Hmm. It is in the first month on mobile, only on mobile, it made two hundred and forty five million dollars. Are you what? Fuck. 
I was very wrong in my first estimation because I saw it and I was like, yeah, that's a lot of money. And I just pulled 30 out of my ass for some reason. That's a... It was actually 245 million. Yeah, you, would, you had 10% almost of the figure. Holy yeah. shit. I must have just pulled that number out of my ass. That's massive, though. That's a, that is a huge feat. And congratulations to them for making that much money in that amount of time. Like, that's insane. That's the thing with mobile games is it's so popular nowadays and people just spend like it's just insane. Yeah, you're right. I, I like I, I do know a, a gentleman who, who loves um uh your kind of uh Japanese anime and manga uh characters. Um uh he simps for them in a big way. And I do know I know like all jokes aside, he would he'd kill for a waifu. Um, and, um, he, he has been known to drop an exorbitant amount of money on apps that will get you particular characters and, uh, particular designs, uh, not necessarily the more skimpy ones, but the more, I don't know, I, it's a, it's a little weird to me, but, you know. Can you put it into words? <laughs> It's hard to, um... Lewd? No, it's not even, it's not even lewd. It's, um... Hang on a second. What is this? I need to... I'm just gonna mute that. I think our volume may be a bit funky, um... Up until this point, because there was something else that was recording volume, and... I don't know, I can fix it in post. Um... No, he, he just has this tendency to find a particular character that he may or may not fall in love with um, quite genuinely and drop a lot of money uh, trying to get that one particular character and try to boost them up as high as they can go and make them as strong as he can. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and look, if, if there's one person that's going to do that, there's going to be what? How many? Like, a couple of thousand, at least, that are going to do a similar thing. And so... I just... To draw attention to such an obvious fact, they made $245 million on a free game. So, I'm guessing that their numbers for the microtransactions that they have... Are huge. Astronomical. Yeah. It's probably the only real money maker for it, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's... Huge. That, that <laughs> is huge. You see, um, mo most of the news things that I have are pretty small, because most of our stuff came out yesterday. Um, I just I just read something comparable in microtransactions about um, Activision Blizzard. Oh, yeah? In in the last in in, in three months, they made one point two billion just from microtransactions. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> that, Jesus! In three months, that's insane. That's nuts, man. So that was Activision and Blizzard combined, or just as one? Activision Blizzard. So that's like the partnership. I'm pretty sure that's the partnership they did. Oh, that's right. They they are partnered now, aren't they? Yeah. With yes. Uh, the latest Call of Duty games. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. That's why you can play all the Call of Duty games on the um, Blizzard launcher. Mm. On yeah. the yeah, what are they? What are they, Blizzard Net or whatever? Battle Net. Battle Net. Blizzard Net. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why a lot of the things like World of Warcraft and stuff like that have turned into micro transactions as well. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know what? To be honest, I I fall I find myself falling into that pit every now and then of a microtransaction or two for World of Warcraft. Like as soon as they decide that they're going to bring out new mounts, that's it for me. I love mounts, man. <laughs> like I'll buy a mount, I'll do it. You know, there's a couple of mounts I don't have in that store, but um... wait, what are you doing, bro? Sorry, my cat yeah. is like attacking my leads. He's he's just gone limp. What are you doing? He's being a cat, Joe. He's, Leave him alone. He's... He's... <laughs> what the fuck? Bro! Anything dangling, bro. Hang on, he's actually... I think he's caught, actually. <laughs> yeah, he was, and now he's... Ah! He's on my lead again. 
Bugger off. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to help him, little bastard. Okay. Um, so, uh, interestingly, uh, I, this, this bit of news is going to come as no surprise to literally anybody. Uh, Todd Howard um, has spoken about uh, future uh, Bethesda games. Hmm. And um, really? all he has said is that he would not rule out more multiplayer open world Bethesda games. Wow. So he hasn't learned anything from Fallout 76. <laughs> he, Look, he the problem, admittedly, the problem isn't with that type of game. The problem is how they've done it. Absolutely it is. And it's the worst demonstration of how to do that, do that game. And I don't think they should ever do that game. They should rely on their single player storytelling experience. Yep. And because that, that works for them and it's great and I love it. And a lot of other fans love it too. Yep. See, but a lot of people were saying, oh, look, I'd love to have a multiplayer Fallout. But that was not them saying, I want to have an MMO Fallout. That wasn't, that's not what it was. It was, I would love to join my friend in a game of Fallout. Yeah. I, uh, I think I've talked about this before, but there is yes. a mod for Skyrim yeah. that lets you um, just pop into other people's games yeah I, I, just just that just that's it i think it, i think i think this mind. conversation was sparked on the stream as as a as, sorry on podcast as uh from the exact same way this has come up i think <laughs> yeah i mean it's like it's that's 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 what the fans wanted just it, it, it doesn't even have to be a big thing just four player max multiplayer People yeah love that shit yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, just add connectivity. Like, come on, man. I mean, we already have an, a, a successful MMO for Skyrim. I mean, Elder Scrolls, not Skyrim. Elder Scrolls, sorry. Um, and that worked out fairly well. Mm. Yep. It, it isn't the best MMO, but it's a pretty good MMO. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um, but I, I have two more very, very small bits of information. Um, Resident Evil 8 will support 4K ray tracing uh, with the adaptive triggers on PS5. So that'll be interesting. Um, mm. I, I, I am quite keen for Resident Evil 8. Uh, not so much for the PlayStation. Um, actually, actually, sorry, as, a, as an add-on to the PlayStation thing... Kitty, get off. Um, as an add-on to the PlayStation thing, uh, there have been companies that have already started making... Uh, face plates for the new consoles. Uh, several of them, I believe, have received cease and desists already. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I think I'd I I stumbled upon that. Yeah, the, the, the console hasn't even come out yet, and there's already cease and desists for them. Jeez. Hold on. Sorry. There I found are. it a little... Yeah, I stumbled upon it. I was like, oh, I wonder what that's about. Mm. Ray, if you get on my keyboard, I swear to God, dude. See yeah, PS5, PS5 faceplate uh, maker cancels pre-orders after legal threat from Sony. Yep, that's 100% where it was. Okay, I need you off the table. Thank you, little man. Um, yeah, and... Um, I mean, the console's not even out yet, but they're they're jumping on that hard, and you know what? I can't yeah. I can't really blame them. Sony's been pretty big to file out, like just throw law cases at people recently. Mm. Um, it happened with uh, what was the what was the story based game that was real good, and the second one was meh. That <sighs> you've you've described many franchises there, Jack. Okay, um, um, shit. Give me a second. Um, <laughs> it's it's the game. Zombie apocalypse world, fungus based. Um, the main character chick is the Ellie. Last of Us. Last of Us, the, the second one. Yep. When there were leaks of that and people were putting on leaks, Sony was just like copy striking people and handing out lawsuits left and right. Yeah. And I feel like it's the same thing with this as well. They're, there's, they're very eager to jump on law cases and just like, they're just willing to throw that right, weight around with this. Yeah. Yeah, look, they want to protect their their um, their intellectual property. I am, I think, um, especially now that Microsoft. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Microsoft owns a monopoly on the development companies now. Like most of them, 
like with with the Bethesda takeover, which um, everybody knows about, uh, or at least should know about by now. If you haven't, if you don't know about it, watch our first episode. Um, uh, that's going to be a huge, huge blow to Sony because fact of the matter is, I played Skyrim on my PS4 and PS3. Um, and Xbox 360. Shut up, I had many copies of that game. I am the problem. <laughs> I am the problem. Um, you know, I think I have... Yeah, I have three copies of uh, Skyrim. I have more than that, actually. Oh. I have, I have my original 360, my PS4 version, and my PS4 HD version. I also have two versions on the PC. And why two for PC? <laughs> because one was the standard, one was the HD. Although I didn't, I never bought either of those. They came with like a humble bundle or something. Um, if you guys don't know what a humble bundle is, they're it, it's actually a pretty good charity thing um, in which you choose how much you donate to them, um, and uh, they give you a certain amount of games determined by how much you spend. Um, for instance, I remember they did a Sid Meier's one in which. $20 got you all of the Sid Meier's games and all of the DLC for, um, for I think it was Civ Five at the time. I don't think Six had come out yet. Um, yeah, we, so it, it's awesome, and it's an awesome initiative because Humble Bundle always gives to charity. That's, that's their job, pretty much, is that they will take this money and then they'll pass it on. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Lizzie's just walking past me with a with a cornetto and a bottle of wine. <laughs> that sounds like a good mix, Lizzie. Yeah, Ryan just said that. That sounds like a good mix. <laughs> I might grab one of those cornettos actually in a sec. No, no, no. I'll get one later because I'm I'm podcasting. I, I, I can't I can't eat it yet. Yet. <laughs> Whatever. Love you. Um. But um. Yeah, I'm, I'm the problem when it comes to Skyrim. But with Bethesda uh, being now owned by... Well, their parent company being owned by Microsoft, when they bring... If they bring uh, Elder Scrolls and Fallout to the, to the next-gen consoles and bring it to PlayStation, what's the first thing they're going to see? First thing they're going to see is the power play that is produced by Microsoft Studios on their PlayStation. Mm. You know, so they have to protect their intellectual property somehow. Yeah, I don't think Sony's going to let that fly, considering how um, they're kind of like a big guy with, like, really sensitive feelings. If you just throw a little bit of shit at it, he loses his shit and starts threatening you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't think um, Sony will be able to cope with Microsoft anywhere near their console. No. No, I think so. Considering, like, how jumpy they've been about plates and even just single games. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not, they're, they're not going to let it slide. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only other little bit of information I have before we move on to our Final Fantasy uh, shitfest is um, the Xbox Series X makes fast travel in Witcher 3 instant. What? <laughs> Damn. That's nice. Instantaneous travel, fast traveling with Witcher 3. That's no depending small how, feat. Depending on how cheap it is, I actually might buy myself another copy of... Uh... Witcher 3? Yeah. Yeah. I'd have, to the, one up. I'd have to get the Xbox first. I'm not getting either of the consoles yet. I will I will att- I will think about buying a PlayStation when God of War is released. Uh, and it's mm. PlayStation exclusive. Yeah. But speaking um, of the X, sorry, speaking of the X, Speaking of the Xbox, did you guys hear about that meme that they were making fun of the Xbox looking like a fridge? So Xbox made a fridge that looked like an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that actually. Oh yeah, yeah. that's amazing. What a bunch of chads. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Actually that reminds me, I, I wonder trade were you there when I did a wonder trade the other day, Jack, and I got a Machamp and the Machamp were it was this Chad? <laughs> no, but that makes sense. It its name was the Chad or something like that. Hang on, I, I need to find my switch. I need to find it exactly. Um, I need right to find here. my champ. Yeah, cause th- I got it through a wonder trade, and I'm like, well, I'm keeping that now. Um, let me let that's, me find it. That's, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, and it wasn't even like a special Machamp or Machoke or anything like that. It was just a regular dude. 
Um, Just a dude. Oh, no, I didn't get rid of him, did I? I hope I didn't. <sighs> I better not have. I'll be super upset. I think I did. I'll get... I'll, I'll find him later. But, um... But, yeah, no, I, I was doing a wonder trade, and then, yeah, just... The Chad... <laughs> disappears in my... In my, um... In my Pokedex. The fridge? The fridge is fucking hilarious. Oh, <laughs> it, it is so good. I want that fridge. <laughs> I, I, you know, I actually really want a Juggernaut fridge. Juggernog, Juggernog. Sorry, Juggernog. Oh, oh yeah. From, um, uh, Call of Duty zombies. Yeah. All, all jokes aside, I'd, I'd buy one. And they, they did have the mini fridges, the Juggernog mini fridges for a while. Um, but I want a proper one, like a, a, a big boy fridge design like that. That'd be big sick. Boy boy. Yeah, bro. <laughs> um, but um, if you guys don't have anything else to bring up news wise. Uh, besides a game called Vampire, the Masquerade is going to become a battle royale. Which I'm... I have now learned that it was a tabletop, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep, Vampire um, the Masquerade is a D10 based. Um... Uh, tabletop game. They're going to make it a battle royale because um, nothing like jumping on the train that would sort you on a little oh. bit of a downslope at the moment. I don't know how <laughs> it's going to work. I genuinely I mean, don't know. Look, if you're creative enough, you can make anything work. So, I'm like, I mean, they made Fortnite. It's work. probably going to be your basic battle royale format, just with something looking fancy and vampire related and trying to time as much as they can. Yeah. Or making it a battle royale. I can't imagine either of them making, you know, a good amount of bank from it, though. So I don't understand why why this decision now to make a battle royale out of the game. I, I, I think it's a bit silly, but I don't know. Yeah, because all the cool kids are doing it, so let's oh. do it. Yeah. 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 Although Vampire yeah. the Masquerade do actually have a bit of a history of making video games, just not battle royale. Yeah. <laughs> I think any other game, like pre twenty twenty seventeen, had history making battle royales, but here we are. Mm, true. With almost every game genre trying to make a battle royale, it's only time before a Final Fantasy game becomes a battle royale. Don't. It's a matter of time. It's <laughs> it's only world. it's only a matter of time before it becomes a thing in Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, there was a Tetris battle royale. I what? will I will destroy everyone. <laughs> you can get it on the Nintendo Switch. It's called Tetris 99. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's <all> now. <laughs> I believe it's Tetris 99, but it is a Tetris by the Royale game. I will end everyone. Just look up Tetris Battle Royale. Tetris. I'm saving Pokemon first. <laughs> I, I put all of my Pokemon in number order from the National Pokedex. You'd be damn sure I'm saving before I exit. And, um... I wouldn't mind a Pokemon Battle Royale. That'll be interesting. It's, uh, it's uh, called Tetris Royale. Tetris Royale? Tetris Royale? It's on the Switch? How much is it? It wouldn't be that I much. Think. It would at least, like, a year or two ago. You watch. Within, if I get it... If I get this, you watch me be on top yeah. of... Yeah, well, I one of. Watch me be in the top, like, thousand in the world. Oh, sorry. I think you are correct. Yeah, I think it is Tetris 99. 99. I because it only allows it to play so I mean, that's fair, yeah. It's free. There you go, Jim. There's your Battle Royale Tetris. <laughs> Jim's number one Battle Royale. <laughs> Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I see those crazy eyes. He's gonna go. <laughs> it's a it's a freebie. <laughs> yeah, as mass, most bad boy owls are. Uh, yeah, I'm not playing. I'm not playing against you in Tetris ever again. What's Jim. the big block? To yeah, you you learned your lesson. I know. <laughs> also learned that I'm terrible at Tetris. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there was a skill ceiling for Tetris until recently. There's a DLC that's $15. What does it entail, though? 
this is this is Jim's equivalent to like porn. The, yeah, no, no. Uh, Genshin Impact. Like, I think Jim will spend like a couple million dollars on this game if he could. No, 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 no. I don't pay to win, boys. I am just genuinely good at Tetris. No, no, you don't pay to win. You pay to play better. No, no I don't pay. I don't pay. <laughs> You pay for Tetris skins. Ooh. What if you could change? Yeah, there you go. I might, I might, I <laughs> might actually go. do if that you, genuinely. If you, could, if you could change like how your Tetris game looks, from like old school to a more newer shit, oh, I'd get a newer one. Old school Tetris make is, is like PTSD inducing. Like it's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's downloading. That's that's for after the pod. But, so moving on to our little bit of a Final Fantasy kind of rant. Uh, We begin our story many, many moons ago when a tiny, tiny, tiny game developer... I just want to cut you off for a second. Fuck you. Because we were on the train of... um, of, uh, Sorry, I I had to quickly look up the name. Uh, We were on the train of Battle Royale. And I was thinking of Pay to Play. So the culling... The second game they released is the Culling Origins is pay to play. You get one free match a game, and then you must spend a certain amount of money per match after that. What is this? The Culling Origins. Oh fuck that! That's... And yeah, and that, that we can move on from that. There, I just wanted to quickly jump in and say that that thing existed. All right, cool. Now, um, <laughs> moving on. We start our story in 1987, where a very small publisher by the name of Square were running out of money. They had nothing. They had a failed uh, many, many games until they realized we have enough for one more. And they titled it Final Fantasy. And they released it on the Nintendo NES at the time. This game, which, if you play it correctly, has about half an hour worth of content. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can play it in... You can, you can easily beat it in half an hour. But this game sold so many copies that it created the um, uh, absolute mega, mega corporation that is now Square Enix. And look at where they are now, publishing games like Tomb Raider, um, Marvel Avengers, um, and some other things. Now, keeping in mind, uh, initially, only 200,000 copies were shipped of this game. 200,000, which for a game, that's not that many. Um, But uh, it was asked of them, it was asked of them to create an extra 200,000. And then they ended up overall creating 520,000 copies of Final Fantasy. And then, here we are. We are now awaiting Final Fantasy 16, um, in which they have announced the protagonist's name. We have discussed this on the last week's podcast, but Ryan does not know about this. Ryan, (laughs) are you ready for... Well, because you're Australian, right? You're going to have a little bit yeah. of a... You're going to have a moment with this name. All right, mate. Let me get me deeper in this. No, no. <laughs> His name is Clive. Clive? Clive. Like Clive Palmer, mate. His name is Clive. Oh, <laughs> no. Are you <laughs> Genuinely, his name is Clive. <laughs> Wow, it's as generic as it's as generic as Final Fantasy IV as Cecil. No, you know what? Actually, no. Cecil is still something else. Like Cecil is probably like Cecil it's... and Kane are probably the more normal names that they have. But Clive, okay, his name is Clive Rossfield. Okay, <laughs> the cast of characters. Clive, Joshua, and Jill. <laughs> what? They're going yeah. more fantasy with this, but then yet the names are so incredibly normal. 
Hold on. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, when, I was watching, when I was just watching the trailer before we started recording, I'm like, the kid's name is Joshua. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was a Jill, but. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, now it's like, w- wonder if it's like um, Jill Valentine. Or is it Jill Valentine? That would be that, that would be horrifying. <laughs> I do not want a what square a and Capcom. I don't want a square and Capcom crossover. Please don't make that happen because then oh. because then we have the opportunity for that prick that's making the Monster Hunter movie to then make a fucking Final Fantasy movie. No, no, it's not happening. <laughs> Let, let's keep some distance. Thank God for that. Now, did you guys ever play Final Fantasy, the original one? No. No. Okay. Basically, at the start of the game, there's very, very little context. You get to choose four characters to run around with. Uh, They are unnamed. You name them yourself, and I think there's only like five or six characters to actually name them. So you can't name them anything exquisite. Um, Like, you couldn't name them anything like Alexander or something like that. There's only, I think there's five or six characters you can use. And... um, you choose everything about them. You choose whether or not they are a... Actually, you don't choose everything. You choose choose their class. And their class determines their sprite. Yep. Um, a, a lot of people will recommend certain builds for you in order to do, to do it. I went in with uh, three black mages and a white mage. <laughs> cool. Because I like the magic. Um, Just... Actually, Do you sorry, not even just... get the joke you just presented in front of me? No, no, no. Perry Piper, the me. No. No. Okay. I'll share it on. I'll share my screen. Hold on, I'll get it up. No, don't you dare! No, don't, don't. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> it, look, it's just five people sitting around with a couch. Oh, 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 just, oh, I know what he's on about. Yeah, I same. The name. I didn't know that was the name of the meme, but I now oh. know what he's on about. No, stop. Don't do it. <laughs> it's very that difficult. happens to be the actress <laughs> that is sitting on the couch. No, this is not. No, fuck you. Um... <laughs> So the, the, you Shout don't friendly. you don't get much you don't get much of a choice with uh, with the classes, but you do get warriors, monks, thieves, black and white, and red mages. That's it. Um, so red mages, mages have been sorry. Yeah, I, I um they do carry it on from the later Final Fantasy, but I do. Is red mage in the first one still melee and magic based? No, um, they are very much a combination of white and black. That's it. Well, oh. Yep. It's, isn't um, there enough of a combination later on down the line? That isn't... Yeah. No, because I'm Oh, blue, sure blue, like... blue mage. Oh, no, blue mage is monster magic. Yeah. They do change around a lot further down the line. Oh, yeah. But I, I haven't played the first one, so I, I just assumed it was the same. No, um, no, no, no. Red, red mages were casters, like, first and foremost, and they, they had full the casters. ability... Yeah, so they were full casters, but it's like... Um, in D and D, right? If you play a cleric, you can get up to ninth level spells. But if you take a paladin, you get the same spells, but only up to level five. Mm. It it's very much like that for a red mage, but they get both black and white magic up to a certain level, and then they can't get any more. It's your good equal build. Yeah, it is. It is. Or, or you can play gym strat three black, one white. Well, that was my strat because I just like the damage spells. Like all Final yeah, Fantasies, I love. I, think- I love spells. I think we can call that the Perry Piper strat now. For fuck's sake. We we don't want to though. Oh, but it's so good. You're 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 an evil human. It's it, it fits so well. I don't know. It's perfect. Oh boy. Um but each of us have a different favorite except for me and Ryan, I think. Ryan and I are we know our favorite of the games, but, but Alex and Jack, what would you say your favourites are? Uh, not 13, because 13 was my least favourite. Okay. 
Um, is this 13 lightning? And yeah, yeah, lightning. yeah, that was the run with that, lightning. That entire freaking one was a yeah. head fuck of a game. It was a head fuck of a game, you're right. But I, 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 I actually did not enjoy it until my second playthrough. Um, because I had it and I was like, oh, I can't really afford to get another game, so I'll just, I'll just replay this. It had good long playtime. And the second time I played through it, there were so many things I picked up on that I didn't realize the first time, and it actually made it far more enjoyable. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, I'm happy someone enjoyed it. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say which is my favorite. I guess I really liked the remake of 7. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess I would prefer... I don't know, like... It... If they finished all, well, at least all the four uh, releases they're going to do with seven, or three releases, or however many the releases they're going to do with the remake, seven might be my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, Cloud is, I, I still hate Cloud. I, um, I genuinely think, like, it's different he's in the, the remake. the worst Final Fantasy character. I, I, I would definitely say he's one of. Um, the, the remake has cloud have a little bit more personality but in the original uh i stand by this and i think jack you agree with me is that the best thing about cloud is zach yeah in the original yeah yeah in this one i actually like cloud i actually like cloud in this one uh in the in the remake yeah. um because they actually gave him some personality and they, they were actually able to portray his battle within himself much better yeah. than reasonable yeah much better than what they had the um, technology to do originally. Like, I feel like he in, in the remake he gets better in the first, second half. In the first half, he's still the same, very annoying cloud. Mm. Like yeah. as, as the story progresses, I, I hated him less, and now I'm at just regular hate. <laughs> so I, I can I can deal with that. That's fair. I feel like with the remake they built him up throughout it as like he starts off he's met up with you know the mercenaries and Tifa. he doesn't really care he's a mercenary but yep. then as the game goes along he slowly opens up towards his friends more yeah I agree um, yeah because originally it was very much just I'm here I'm here for the money I don't give a shit but then when he, when he actually started realising the plight that they were all going through, he, he decided to stick around. Um, yeah. it, well, I mean, it was either that he decided to stay for the plight or uh, he wanted to bang that ass. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. very convincing. Yeah, but... Uh, she also agrees that the best part of Cloud is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're right. You're so right, Jack, and I hate you for it. <laughs> Shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Poor Cloud. Poor, poor Cloud. Um, but um, given the original Final Fantasy VII, when you guys go to the Golden Saucer, there's actually a chance to date, to go on a date with three characters. In, in what one? Sorry, I, I, in the original, I didn't hear it. In the original uh, 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 Final Fantasy VII, when you first get to the Golden Saucer, there's a chance to go on a date with th one of three characters from your party. Did you guys know that you could actually change who you go on a date with, depending on your choices in the game? Yes. I didn't even know that. There were, uh, I, my knowledge of Seven is very minor, so I okay. didn't even know that you go on a date with somebody. That's fair. <laughs> so the, the, the date is either Aerith, um, or Eris, Eris, or Eris? The, the flower Aerith. lady? Aerith. Yeah, the flower lady. The flower girl. Tifa, or Barrett. <laughs> it's 100% got to be Barrett. I always went with Barrett. <laughs> I always did the choices that saw me go into the, um, I think it was a, I think it was a Ferris wheel with Barrett. Yeah, it's a Ferris wheel. Mm. If, uh, honestly, I don't like Cloud... I, I, I don't like shipping Cloud with anyone. Mm. Keep him with Barrett. Yeah, it's a bit of a. Yeah, like, it's not. It's not probably one. in the remake. I probably prefer uh, Tifa and Cloud. That makes sense. 
See, I don't even know if it does. I feel like it's this... I feel like their relationship is a bit odd. And and I feel like the best representation of their relationship was in the animated movie Advent Children, where oh. they still weren't together, but you could tell that there was this mutual care for each other. Not, not even as a romantic thing, but more of a... Right. I've known you since I was a child. I... I kind of just want to be the elder brother sort of thing. I prefer that. Mm. Honestly, yeah, what's, I think that's what, a... what's going on, step bro? <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex. Yeah, like, look, Cloud I'm doesn't have sorry. enough time for T from that. He's got too much time brooding and wondering how much his life, his life sucks. Yeah. And how, you know, him crying in the corner. It takes up too much of his time. Yeah. He well, must I, cry in the corner until Sephiroth comes and actually causes problems. And he's like, oh, I guess I better do something then. Yeah. I mean, he's probably getting over the fact that he's the one that actually killed Aerith. Did you guys know about this? No. So there is a guy that actually pulled apart that scene where Sephiroth kills Aerith. Yeah. And he pulled it apart and he actually went, hang on, this is where the blade goes through. He would not have hit any vital organs. There were no blood. Cloud drowned her. <laughs> what? That... Well, you think about it. He's gone through this whole PTSD thing of Sephiroth. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's entirely plausible that he just nutted out. Like, quite fun. <laughs> that he nutted out? Yeah. Bro. He absolutely <laughs> nutted out and just murdered her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your 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 meaning of nutted out was very different to ours. Okay, um, I mean, I, I know what he means, but <laughs> yeah, I know what he means as well. But I just thought it was I funny took it to run with. Way first, so did I. There's a um, difference between nutted out and nutted on her. <laughs> 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 I fucking hope so. Oh my god. Uh, well, he may have drowned her, but I'm, 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 I'll keep it as like Sephiroth. Oh, I'd look, I look. I, I know, but it was just. It's a fun thing to kind of think. Hang on. He because yeah. if you watch the video, like uh, if you watch the video later, it, 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 it's plausible, man. Okay, let's not lie. I think Cloud is losing his fucking mind. Absolutely. Um, they show it through the oh, whole oh, thing. Oh. Yeah. So like, it, it isn't like that big of a stretch. Like, it makes sense. Yeah. He's a nut job. Absolutely. Uh, it, won't be, it won't be too long before he kills Tifa and y Yuffie. Hmm. He'll yeah. kill everyone. He'll kill Barrett as well. He'll yeah. kill his daughter. He won't, the only one he won't kill is uh, Vincent. I think Vincent's too badass. I reckon if Vincent and Cloud were to fight, Vincent would just end him. I loved I loved that Final Fantasy Seven game where he plays Vincent. You know, uh, funny. Cerber Dirge of Cerberus. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That you know, it'd cool. be funny if we we bleep out all the parts where we say Aerith dies, just for spoiler reasons. Wouldn't that be funny? That's actually a good point. I wonder how many people don't know. Oh, you've got to. Like, if you bought the remake and played the remake, you've got to know. I mean, yeah, maybe, but, like, how many people are playing this as their first thing, as their first game? Like, as their first Final Fantasy. This is their introduction I, to Final Fantasy. I knew Aerith was dead far before I picked up the game itself. Yeah, I know, but we're of a, we're of a very different era, too. Yeah. Yeah, I did start late as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I feel like we should talk... A little bit more about seven, eight, and nine. The reason the reason I say seven, eight, and nine is because um, I have a bias towards eight. Fuck you, it's the best. Um, <laughs> and and because seven, eight, and nine were like the pinnacle of Final mm. Fantasy games. I never um, played nine. Nine was good. It. What was nine again? Nine was you played as Zidane, the kind of yeah, monkey boy. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think I played that one. Hmm. That's got a weird love interest thing in it too, actually. It actually makes me a little uncomfortable, if I'm honest. I think I've played 12. Yeah, 12 was Zodiac ch Children. Whatever it was. Um, uh, was that, was that with, with uh, Vaughn? Yeah, that was yeah. I've played that a little bit. I remember um, 
they did a remake of that as well. Mm. I, I played the remake because I was like, I, I have to collect all of the Final Fantasies because I'm a Final Fantasy nerd. And I started playing it and I was like, oh, this is why I didn't have the original copy. Cool, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like 12 at all. Yeah. It, how far did you get into it? I got about three, four hours in. Oh, you should try harder. Try get 10 hours in. No, nah, man. Uh, I, if a game doesn't get me within three hours, I'm done. Especially That's these days, because in a lot of cases, you can finish a game in three hours. You know, especially yeah. if especially if they're the ones that are more multiplayer based, that they just kind of went, oh, let's put in a bit of a a little a little uh, a little, a little campaign. Yeah, we put in a little story so people know where we are. Like um, the DLC for Battlefront Two when that came out for the campaign, it was one mission. It was a good mission. Yeah. It was a good mission, but it was one. <laughs> Um, but I, I, don't, I don't think Alex said Lee's favorite Final Fantasy. Yet. No, you're right. Um, I probably ten and ten two. Yeah. I, I okay. Agree, yeah, because yeah, our, our our mate Craig is a huge fan of ten as well. Mm, yeah. Um, he 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 thoroughly enjoyed ten, and um, and I can see why ten was a really good. Really good game. The only thing that I didn't like was um, if you if you go in and you type in um, fucking what's his name? What's that main character's name? Titus. 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 Type in Titus laugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that's a pretty bad I, laugh. I hate. I hate you. I was literally about to type that in the Google. And I was <laughs> It was. It is the most cringy voice acting moment I think I have ever heard. But I need to see this. Give me a second. Oh, okay, you do that. <laughs> now, keep keeping in mind though. How do I spell Titus? T i d u s. T i d u s. Um, keeping in mind though, there was no Final Fantasy game before this that had voice acting. This was this was brand new territory for them. Yeah. Um, and I think it was their first. Uh, this. Um... <laughs> this. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. You definitely have seen it. Like, it's, um... It's a meme. Oh, 100% it's a meme. Ha, 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 No, it's fucking awful. But, um... <laughs> I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed 10. I thought 10-2 was balls and is my least favourite game of all of the Final Fantasies. I don't remember it much, but I remember for some reason enjoying it. Okay. Because in 10-2, in you play as... You play as um, the two girls, Yuna, Yuffie, Yuffie, and... Riku. Oh, Riku, sorry. Yuna. Who's Yuffie? Yuffie's from seven. She's Ninja Girl, seven. Oh, yeah. You got, you got, you play as Yuna, Riku, and Pain. That's right. Pain? Yeah. Pain was a character from... No, was Pain the new one? Or was it Riku was the new Pain. one? Pain was Pain the new one. That's oh right. my god, this goes on forever. <laughs> it's a long a ass minute. laugh, bro. It is and that's why it's a meme. Him. It's and why then, it's a then, meme. Oh. It, it was hard to watch. Oh, it's awful. Oh, it's awful. Can't, I can't lie though, Pain was a badass. Pain was cool. Pain was cool. Um I Be I careful, I, you might cut paper with all that edge in your name. Oh <laughs> <laughs> <All right, laughs> my god. Um, but yeah, 10, 10 was good. I, I, I never liked 10 too. It was a weird, it was, it was more, it was actually the three girls had become pop stars and were like dancing to kill their enemies. It was weird. There was a weird thing with that game that it did not appeal to me at all. Um, oh, you don't want to be a, a pop star and start dancing to kill people? No, I don't want to be Michael Jackson in, in, in I mean, Walker. imagine... Imagine, when do, wait, when do they dance to kill people? That's when they that's their special moves. It's due to their that costumes. Their costumes give them special moves, which are dancers. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, that's strange. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could have like one of them as a warrior, and then you could have another one as like a thief, and then the other one you could have them as a singer and a performer. And their attacks were literally like dancing and singing. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. It I, was remember, weird. I remember Yuna, Yuna used guns in 10 2. 
Which, yeah. trend, which I I thought that was kind of cool. I'm not going to lie, because Yuna was the mm. like the the summoner in the first one. She um, she was the caster. She was you know the badass magic bitch, and um, and then for them to give her pistols, I was like, I, I kind of like it. They've made her a bit more edgy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I I didn't like the game. I, I do hate points where people or certain things get unnecessary amount of edginess or edge. It's just <laughs> like they they tried and failed with cloud. Um, it doesn't always work. No. And sometimes it makes them look stupid. I feel like where they got it right was uh, Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. I agree. And can we talk about that for the next hour and a half? Um, yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah, man. Because Squall was this really interesting character. Now, for those of you who don't know Final Fantasy VIII, um, it's the best one. Uh, it, eight, eight is eight is Depending on the game you find Squall, you might even call him Leon for some reason. Oh, yeah, because yeah. he was featured <laughs> He was featured very heavily in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Um in and fact, DLC number three. Oh yeah, I forgot about that actually. But yeah, um, don't get it. No, it's no. There's no point. There's no point. Uh, Kingdom Hearts three mistake. was the biggest letdown in gaming history. No, um, I disagree. Oh, there, there, there are worse. There are much worse. Like that is a playable game. No, but we were waiting ten years for that. True. And they left out half their car. Characters. Yeah, they didn't add a single Final Fantasy Final character until the, until DLC, the DLC, which was so because dumb. That's because everyone was complaining about it. Um, yeah, we don't want to jump on Kingdom Hearts Final Fantasy. Keep it that so, way. I, I, I still never understood why they just called him Leon. Yeah, that's like because I, I started a Kingdom Hearts. I I, can I went answer over this. to. I know his last name's um, Leon Hart. Leon Hart. Leon Hart. Yeah. But yeah. When, when I transferred over the Kingdom Hearts, I'm like, hey, there's Leon. This is Squall. Wait, what? Yeah, so Leon changed his name because his friends died and he felt that he was no longer um, worthy of his name. Yeah. In fact, that's why on the back of yeah. Squall, uh, back of Leon's jacket in, in Kingdom Hearts are the ha same, ha uh, same wings that Renoa has on hers. Yeah. That's, that's the backstory of that. That's why that happened. It's super edgy. Um, but Squall as a character in Final Fantasy VIII, holy shit. The development for him from point A to point B was phenomenally done. Um, for those who don't know anything about Final Fantasy VIII, what you're looking at is this game in which you are... Actually, yeah, um, I have a... I have a yes. shirt, and it, it it's it's relevant. Um, <laughs> simping for Squall. Yeah, oh, dude, I'd simp for Squall. Um, you them for a lot of things, Jim. You're right. Um, None of them are real. <laughs> shoot me. Um, you basically just start as a mercenary. You're you're undergoing your exams to become a mercenary, and once that starts, once you start your proper job after completing your exams, you, well, everything begins to snowball in the story and um, you end up going up against a sorceress in the end of the first disc. Um, who you subsequently go through and, uh, and, and, and fight her again. Um, and interestingly enough, you fight three different forms of the same sorceress that they find out this particular sorceress from the future is possessing sorceresses in the past. Um, and so there's this big, uh, big element of time that gets put into, into the game. And Squall's development from this teenager who he's like, he's, he's just there for a purpose. He's there, he's there to serve his purpose. And then he gets thrust into this leadership position always, and he hates it so much. But he realizes after he finally begins to open up to his friends, he realizes he's the best suited for this job. Because let's face it, no one's going to give a fucking leadership role to Zell. 
<laughs> Zell's cool. He's not a fucking leader. No way. I believe I believe Zell was Alex's favorite character too. And you know Zell, what? Zell and Irvine were my, were yeah. my two And you know favorites. what? Both of them are really good characters. Are really good characters. But Zell would never be a good leader. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Like, no Too fucking way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Irvin, it's really... Uh, the more I think about Irvin's character, the more it baffles me. Um, <laughs> Get away, because of his, like, his style. No, 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 it's not even that. It's just that it, it's actually a good baffling. Because you look back and you go, oh, shit, this is why he's this way. There's yeah. reasons. Because in the first disc, you get, you get assassination orders to, uh, to go and kill this sorceress. And you, as a character, don't know who she is exactly. You just kind of go, this is my duty. She's a sorceress. Later on I in the game... It. Oh, sorry. Yep. And it's like, she's the sorceress and I need to kill her. That's what you're going on. Yeah, exactly right. That's all you've got. And, and you as a player are feeling that as well. You kind of go, okay, this is a bad bitch. We need to go and, we need to go and end her. Killing those bad bitches. Yeah. But later on in the game, you come to the conclusion, you and your groups come to the conclusion that these guardian forces, these summons in which you give your characters in order to power them up, in order to make them stronger, they take a specific spot in your brain and that spot removes memories. Um, so it turns out that that sorceress they were sent to kill was actually the person that looked after all of that party except for one member in an orphanage when they were younger. Irvin included. Irvin had not had a GF, had a, did not have a guardian force up until this point. So he, he gets nervous at the shot, at taking this, this sniper shot, because that's what he was de uh, given the job to do, is to fire this one shot at this woman. He remembers who she is. So he's there shaking and not able to do it. He's going, he's saying, it's Squall, I can't do it. You guys are monsters, pretty much. Mm. And Squall's going, what the fuck, man? Like, you act <laughs> so cool. Like, you act so calm cool. and so cool through every aspect of your life. And now you snap. And he's there going, well, yeah. Like, you, because he remembers. He remembers what's going on. And he knows who she is. And when you think about that later on, because that was actually a recent revelation I had, is that, yeah. like, it's like, oh, fuck, that's why, he, that's why he fucking freaked out. He wasn't a pussy. He just didn't want to kill the person who was essentially his mother figure. Yeah. You know? And there's so many amazing moments in that game, character-wise, that just, they make you feel... They make you feel it. Now, this game is only text-based. There's no voice acting. There's no nothing. You, you're reading the text. And I remember yeah. when, I was, when I was very young, because the game out in 1999, my brother got it when it was released, so I was seven. I remember watching him play it when I was seven, and I was reading the text as well, and I'm going, why am I feeling the emotion of this game? Why, how is it that I am feeling the emotion? And it turned out it was the fucking right. soundtrack. Yep. Yeah. There are times where... Well, the soundtrack to pretty much every Final Fantasy game is great. Yeah. yeah. At times where, like, text is actually better than actual voice acting. Because there are times where voice acting can fail. Um, I nearly discovered Titus Laugh. Um, <laughs> so sometimes it's better just to leave the text. Yeah, you're right. Because imagine how good that scene with uh, Titus laughing would be if, um, if it was just text. <laughs> It, it, it'd still be a meme. Oh. It would still be a meme. It probably would, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, but at least there's some, like, how oh, it isn't just... Uh. Yeah, it's very cringy. It, it, it'll probably <laughs> just be a gif of him doing the laughing animation. <laughs> mm. That would be the meme. That's yeah, you're why, right. like, like, authors have been able to write, you know, romance novels and stuff like that for decades, and people... Prefer romance novels over movies. Yes, yeah. sometimes they're in text. My preferred uh, genre is tragedy. I just love it just when I see people fail. 
<laughs> there is nothing wrong with me. It's not fucking surprising. Evil, e evil human. Um, I have no idea. And I, I, actually, another point with the text-based stuff with this particular game is it is quite interesting because when you have the text in front of you, you can interpret it different to another person. In fact, yep. how long has that game been out now? It's been 21 years since that game was released. And we still see theories that people are making about that game, about Final Fantasy VIII. And they're still developing those theories. Like, there's a theory that Squall dies at the end of the first disc and the rest of it is just him in a dream. Well, how can you dream if you're dead? Well, that's a good point. But, like, actually, if you read, <laughs> if you read the synopsis of it, like the, um, the full laid-out text version, it's plausible. It mm. is completely plausible. Um, but yeah, there's these really amazing, amazing moments, but, um, but I, I, I actually have a bit of a hot take about Final Fantasies 7 and 8 that I would like to share coming on Coming in podcast. hot. I am coming in hot. I believe that Final Fantasy 7 is a sequel to Final Fantasy 8. So what do you, what do you... I'm, so, I'm watching Alex just rub his eyes and he's like, what the fuck? Nah. <laughs> Fresh off the crack, coming in with these theories. Yeah. Ooh. I'm going to cry. No. <laughs> um, what's your, what's your um, reasoning on these, on, on that? Like, what, what, um, what's your theory on that it is a sequel? Okay. Explain that. So, Final Fantasy VIII, the reason that they go through their final battle at all, sorry, I've had a couple of beers, so I'm actually feeling really relaxed to talk about this. And and this is gonna sound like the the ramblings of a madman right now. You know you know the meme where the guy is like, and there's board behind him. He's got every... Hold up a second. So um, Final Fantasy VIII. The reason the Final Fantasy VIII happens at all is because they have to go forward into the future to kill this sorceress in order to protect their own timeline. Now the thing is, if they go forward in time and kill her, yes, yeah, sure, it stops her from affecting their timeline. But it also changes the timeline. That's right. That timeline oh, okay. is decrepit. Mm. Let me just... Okay, so we're talking just not one timeline. We're talking about multiple timelines. Correct. Going by the theory that there is more than one. Correct. Yeah. There would have to be. Okay. So this isn't really a connected story, then. If, if they take... Incorrect. Okay. Okay, so we're saying that 7 and 8 are on the same timeline. Let me get yes, to it. Let me get to okay. it. Okay. Okay. I believe that... So, if they go forward in time and they beat Ultimecia, that timeline's already there. That doesn't change that timeline. Seven. Yeah. So, uh, eight. Um, Ultimecia destroys so much of that world. In fact, she takes Balam as an island, which is an island in the center of the world, and makes that her castle. She pulls it out of the ground and makes it her castle. I believe that Final Fantasy VII is after the events of Ultimecia dying in the timeline that Ultimecia exists. Okay, so... So, were they, so the ones where, like, they go kill her and then... Yep. Now, my reason... No, no, no big whole Ultimecia is Genova. No big... No, that connection. I'm, I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm getting to that. I am getting to that. So now, you, now you've thrown me off because that that has sparked some things that I, yeah. Hang on. So keep in mind with Final Fantasy VII. So Final Fantasy VIII had this world where everything was technologically advanced, or at least modern day techs. Um. Final Fantasy VII has places that are advanced in technology, but run down, destroyed. There are places that are decrepit. There are places that don't have any form of technology. Um, in fact, where where you find Yuffie is pretty... Yeah. You know, there's not much going on. If you... And that would exp that would be an explanation for that. That Ultimecia destroyed so much that they're trying to kind of rebuild, and how they're trying to rebuild is by using the Mako reactor. And 
by experimenting on this creature that they find randomly by the name of Genova. It's a space lady. It could be, or it could be a sorceress. Now, hang on, Jack. Using using the thought the theory that this is possible, right? Genova. <laughs> mid mid explanation. This is possible. <laughs> yeah. This is possible. Ultimecia requires a, a sorceress knight. Ultimecia finds her sorceress knight in Safer, who dedicates his entire life to her to a point where it's almost insanity. Um, yeah. Where he, he, he loses himself in this quest to be a sorceress knight. Who also loses himself in a quest to protect the person he calls mother? Sephiroth? Sephiroth. Okay. There is a... There, <laughs> Sephiroth had there were a lot of accounts where Sephiroth wasn't hadn't gone funny until after he destroyed that place and found Genova. How uh, well? Hey? Yeah. So that is my theory that Genova is Ultimecia and that Seven is in fact a sequel to eight in the timeline in which Ultimecia lived. I think Genova's a space lady. <laughs> <laughs> Alien. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. And, and, and in a lot of cases too, and it's my head cannon, by the way, but, um, but in a lot of cases as well, a lot of people go, oh no, but none of the Final Fantasies are linked. Bullshit. In the Japanese version of Final Fantasy VIII, if you unlock Gilgamesh, he actually says to you, he actually calls Squall, Cain. What an uncommon name. Hmm. And Cain was the one from Final Fantasy... Um... Oh. Was it 6? Oh, no. No, 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 no. It wasn't Cain. Sorry, who was it from Final Fantasy 6? Um... It was... It was actually Final Fantasy 6 characters. He actually calls Squall somebody from Final Fantasy 6. Um. Ah, Celeste. No, it's not Celeste. Fuck. I've forgotten which one it is now. Good on you, Jim. Oh, he recognizes him as someone else from a Recon different Final Fantasy. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. And it's like, oh, hang on. It, but when they translated it, 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 it didn't happen. Um, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah. So, uh, so that's my theory. So, where does Final Fantasy fourteen fit into it? Uh, that's a great question. Final Fantasy fourteen and Final Fantasy eleven, I think, are outliers. Genuinely. Yeah, I, I just wanted to throw something to the rule in your head cannon. No, that no, it, it 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 doesn't. <laughs> it, it genuinely doesn't because um, I, I do believe that those two are are um, are outliers, and the reason I say that they're outliers is because they contain so many aspects of all of the games. For instance, Final Fantasy XIV now have the Gunlance um, uh, uh, class in which you wield a gun blade. And it's the same, like, a lot of people have the theory that Ten is related in the same world as Seven. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Ten is like the end yeah. of the timeline or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, people... Okay, so, what does 15 fit in? Uh, 15, I believe, would fit in right at the beginning. At the beginning? Yeah. Mm. Um, I did actually read a thing about this. I can't remember where it was, though. 15 and its demons and how the world operates specifically with the eternal darkness as well is a big world-changing stuff. Mm -hmm. The fact that that's not present in later things... I think it, it's either. Well, it, it has is, to be much later, but it is present in later things. Okay, where, 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 where are the demons and the eternal darkness? Final Fantasy thirteen two. Yeah. In the heart of chaos. Yes, but it's not really. That's. But it's not really present in any other all the games. It's like. And in Final Fantasy ten. I played ten, so. Um, 
Um, so Final Fantasy X, you, it, it's um, what do they what do they call that kind of and that that creature? Is that, uh, sin. 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 There it is. That's the one. Yeah, I, I, I think it does. I think it would relate. Um, yeah, it's just like it's better to keep it separate, just because when you introduce big world elements like that and put it somewhere on the timeline. It doesn't make sense for it to interact or for it just to go away oh. in other games. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And this is and why that's the biggest problem with trying to make them connect. Yeah. And look, and and, and 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 this is why I, I I say very very adamantly is that it is my it is my head canon and it is just a theory. Though it yeah, and I'll give you credit. Seven and eight, the comparison does fit enough. Mm-hmm. That, that's very Ooh. possible. Actually, speaking of which, ones, if, if so. you if you look at both Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy VII's map world map side by side, Balam is final in, is in the center of eight, and if you just remove that and put the maps over each other, and I think one needs to be rotated. Actually, I think one of the one of the maps needs to be rotated. It looks pretty similar. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure those two could be connected, mm. um, and maybe a few other the Final Fantasies in that set. Yeah, but you know the bigger ones, the MMO, uh, fifteen, mm. maybe even sixteen. We'll see how sixteen gets. I'm really excited for that. I am too, actually. I think it's going to be um, great. If you haven't watched the trailer for that, do it. I'm... Would um would so you said Gilgamesh called Squall somebody else? Yes. Would it have been Bart? Oh, maybe. I, I'm trying to look it up, but I can't find it. Bart is the Final Fantasy V um, protagonist. Ah, that is correct. That that is the one. I thought it was. Okay. I, thought, I thought it was Final Fantasy VI, but no, it's Final Fantasy V. Yep. Yep. Bart's. He recognizes Squall as Bart's. Right. So anyway, but um. I mean, genuinely, the only way that they actually link is through um, Decidia, mm. honestly. But you know, still, I like I like the theory. Um, let me let me get the uh, Final Fantasy sixteen trailer up again. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to start playing fourteen <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah, I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> I'm already paying for I'm- WoW. I mean, you can play. Yeah, I'm only too deep in WoW right now. Yeah, and yeah, Shadowlands yeah. is about to drop, man. I mean, you can put you can play to level thirty for free. So, oh, can you? Uh, yeah, that's all right. My white mage is at level eighty. I don't want to. I don't want to leave her alone. <laughs> want me to make a black mage for you, and we can team up together, bro? I'd do it. Alex, what do you play? Do you play tank? Ryan, do you play tank? Oh God, what are we doing? Tank. <laughs> Don't even try to convince me. <laughs> yeah, we, we're on well. We're on well. We're on well. One MMO at a time. One MMO at a time. I've made I've made that mistake before. I was playing like Guild Wars and and WoW and um and I think it was Kotor or, or, or Star Wars: The Old Republic at the same time, and I was like, I hate myself. <laughs> I think sixteen and fifteen can be connected because it's got the same gods. Hmm. Well, in the trailer, 15, 15 was going to be a sequel to thirteen, like a direct sequel. Fifteen was actually originally yeah. titled uh, Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen. I right. think, I think, I think sixteen may be a prequel to fifteen, maybe because just how they set it up, end with the gods. Yeah, well, they're, they're pretty much in everything, but. It just seems very similar, like they're actually interacting in the world, in the world without you, hmm. and the how the magic and sword play and the equipment. If 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 it gave us a little bit more in the story, maybe I could draw more connections. Hmm. But it, yeah, it's still early days though. Yet, like we got we got to yeah. take we got to take it as Square has announced that there's a Final Fantasy sixteen coming. We might not see it for a decade. Maybe five to five. Five decades. <laughs> five, five four years, maybe. Fuck, man, I'll be 80. <laughs> man, this game's amazing. I am so moist. <laughs> I haven't been able to get it up for the last 30. <laughs> this game's done it for me. 
<laughs> and by that time, we're like up to Call of Duty, like fucking sixty-five. <laughs> I'm still playing it and still still pumping noobs. Call of Duty World War Fifteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, all jokes aside, I actually want to double check the um, American polls. Oh no! Don't bring. Don't oh, bring that in the podcast. Not as the podcast. I'm going to cut yeah. it out of the podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm watching Trevor again. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm, I'm quite moist at the moment. <laughs> it, it's it's it, it's slavering me out. Oof. Ryan, did you get phasmophobia? Alex, did you? You want to die? You want to die? Yeah, in phasmophobia, I've died the most so far. Bro, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll gift it to you, bro. Uh, I will gift myself to you, James. <laughs> I've been waiting so long for you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I want you as my groomsman, bro. <laughs> so you can groom him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's why you're my groomsman, not my best man. That's a little creepy. He can be both. Oh, true. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, genuinely, there seems to be no update for the last over an hour. Joe Biden's at 238, Donald Trump's 213. Right. But um, I am looking at the um, the polls in which are still going. Um, Just type in the Google search, presidential election, who's winning? There are five states that Trump is winning. And there are two that Biden is winning. So, heavy lead at the moment. Biden is winning by 25 seats. But if Trump gets all of those states, he wins. I mean, five states is quite good. If, if, if Biden gets just, just gets one, he wins, right? Yep, yeah, but it's like a margin. It is mm. a tiny ass. So, hey, do we want to put money on this? Because I think Trump's going to win. I think he is too, man. My dad put money on it. Yeah. The 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 um the odds were like three dollars fifty to one. Yeah, I remember my dad uh, doing it uh, four years ago for 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 the first election. Mm. Um, he put money on it. He won money. Wow, I can't believe that. There's so... Oh, that's going to be rough. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen. Seriously. Uh, because, see, I don't think anything... I think that no matter who's going to... I don't think it's going to be a big impact, regardless of who's going to get in. Yeah, well, by this by this point... It's going to be a slight margin and nothing's going to get through Parliament. There will be so many people blocking. <clears throat> Ready to block the cock? Either way, I reckon there's going to be riots. Yeah, I, I do view both of them as quite incompetent. So. Yeah, same. Anyway, um, yes. Did you hear that Final Fantasy VIII was actually meant to be based on Laguna's story? Like, completely. It was meant to be Laguna's story? Yes. Oh. No, I did not. I, I'd, take a, I'd take a Laguna story, to be honest. Like, so you would sacrifice Final Fantasy VIII? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. What I mean is, like, if they were to release a Laguna story... Although, having said this, if they released a Laguna story instead of Final Fantasy VIII, we'd never know about Final Fantasy VIII. But Laguna is a seriously interesting character. Mm. That dude's been through a lot. And that's the thing. You either have guys that, like, 
think Laguna was like a, you know, he was an interesting character because he went through such development. And then you've got a lot of people who are like, ah, oh, he annoyed the shit out of me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, look, he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a dickhead. Don't get me wrong. Like, he's, he's, yeah, right. you know, he, he's playful. He's a bit useless when it comes to directions. But, oh, and, and remembering literally anything. But, <laughs> um, but Laguna is such an important character. You know, like, Laguna fell oh. in love. Laguna is this character. And, and, and the interesting thing is, too, you see four small clips of Laguna. Four small parts yeah. as you play as Laguna Kiros and Ward. And yet you get so invested in his story as well. And um, to put it into perspective, Laguna affected the world around Squall more than anyone else. Laguna fell in love with a girl named Julia. Julia, who ended up waiting for Laguna to come back from war, but he never did. Um, Being a simp. Yep. Uh, Julia ended up marrying General Carraway. The two of them had Renoa, who is one of the party members. Mm. L- Laguna meets Rain. They have a child who is Squall. Squall and Renoa end up together. Yeah. To show, you know, love never really... You know, love's never love's a force to be reckoned with. Second of all, there is a there is a part in that game where Laguna is filming for a film. He is 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 filming as an actor. Sorry, that 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 came out stupid. Yeah, Laguna is filming a <laughs> is filming a movie, and he is just an actor, and he is there in a suit of armor and a gun blade, and the way he holds his gun blade. Did you guys see anybody else holding a gun blade the same way Laguna does? Sorry. Sorry. Huh? Yeah, Safer saw Any. that movie and was influenced so heavily by Laguna. Yeah, yeah. you know Laguna yeah. affected so much of Squall's world because Cipher mentions that it was a romantic dream of his to be a source of night. That's and exactly that movie. That. that movie that he filmed was that he was playing the source. Of Hundred percent. Yeah. There's all these nice little moments that if you blink, you miss them. And every time I go back and play that game, and I've I play it annually. Every year I go through it at least once, and it's around my birthday every year. Yeah. And every single time, there's something else I pick up. Yeah. You know, something new. Like, this time through, I went through the Shumi uh, tribe place properly this time around when I play, when I played through it. And it amazes me just how much lore is written in the, in the background of this world. Yeah. You know, they didn't do that so much with Seven. With Seven, what you had is what you got. And they did the same thing with Nine as well. Everything was in front of you, and there was nothing else really worth going for, except for Seven, you had a couple of optional characters you could get, like Vincent. Vincent, brilliant choice. That was awesome. Nine, there's none of that. You, It's it's pretty linear, honestly. Um, and same with Final Fantasy X and whatnot. Final Fantasy VIII was this anomaly in which it had so many side quests that you could do that told you... Like, some things told you heaps about the world, some things told you a little bit about the world. For instance, the UFOs. Oh. Geno- hey? No, I'm just fucking around. Oh, fair enough. Genova the Space Lady. Genova the Space Lady, yeah. The UFOs <laughs> that come through that game are the weirdest thing that didn't need to be there, but they were. They were there. And every now and then you'd get into an encounter, you'd get into one of your turn-based encounters, and there'd be no option to attack. You just watch as a UFO flies past the screen. Yes. And that's it. But sometimes the UFO would be like carrying a cow or something. What the hell is going on? Yeah, 100%. And then by the time you finish the UFO quest, you get a card out of it. Oh yeah, I remember. I'm just looking up the UFOs now. I can I completely remember watching because I never played the game myself, but I always watched Ryan or Luke play it. Yeah, 
and I am now remembering <laughs> these UFOs. Yeah, bro. Those UFOs were insane. There was no point to them. There was no there was no point to them at all, but they were really well done. Um, you know, it's just all these all of these things that you wanted to go through and you wanted to find. Like later on, so at the start of disc 2, you start as Laguna in this little town called Windhill. And mm. I couldn't think of anything more than when I was back playing as Squall and everybody. I need to go to Windhill. I need to check that out. And I went as Squall. And it was amazing how many things you find out from people yeah. that, that are there. It's, it's fucking insane. Mm. You know, one of the sorceresses, one of the sorceresses you fight, Adele, later on in, you know, she, yeah, you send her rolling in the deep. You really do. Um, but <laughs> fuck me. Um, but like even his, even her involvement in the game is because Laguna captured her. Yeah. You know, oh, there's just so many, there's so many moments and, and what you're telling me is Laguna is actually Genova. No, <laughs> Ultimacia is Genova. <laughs> no. And Renoa is Ultimacia. <laughs> what, I, what I've learned is Laguna is a wannabe Sephiroth. No. No, not at all. He's like the anti Sephiroth. No, I'm just saying because he wants to be uh, in the night, the Sorceress Knight, and the, the real fan theory was that Sephiroth was one. Yeah. So it was just tying in theories. No, that's fair. That's fair. Actually, I suppose Laguna was in a way. It's, in a, it's sort of kind of yeah. he was he so he he kind of was a sorceress knight because he protected ellen and ellen had these mystical powers that nobody else had uh and she is the reason that time travel was possible um, he, he was a temp he was a what he was a temporary one he was a temporary yeah you know and oh i don't know I don't know. There's so many brilliant moments in that game. And if anybody wants to, like, just go through a ride, you go through that game. There is so much... Man, Kitty, if you sit on my keyboard, I swear to God. There is, there's so much... There's so much story. <laughs> just see Ray's tail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, I was actually kind of proud of him then. He didn't step on the keyboard. He stood on my Switch, which is over my keyboard, and then leapt off. <laughs> he didn't step on the keyboard. He, he's, I was about to say he's not a stereotypical cat. You watch him come back and do it. But um, but no, seriously, Final Fantasy VIII, one of the greatest games I think I've ever played for story. And by far. sorry, you said by far. You know, it's it's a huge game, huge game. It is. It's a it's a time sink as well. Like you need to dedicate the time. But fuck me, it's worth it. And I have fucking sunk so many hours into the side game, the, the card game. Yes, there is a card game oh. in that. And the... Um, <laughs> triple the, Triad? Yeah, Triple Triad is an insane side game. Like, it's a, just a little mini game. You get these cards, and on uh, each side of the card has a, has a number... And um, you battle the cards, basically. Like, you put one card in one place. If somebody puts a card next to it that has a higher number than the one that's displaying on that side, then it flips and becomes theirs. And basically, the, the person with the most cards on the field that's their color wins. And then you take, you take a card of your choice. Um, mm. it, it, it's brutal, man. And, there's, and you can get so many extra things early game if you play it too. Like, you can have Squaw's ultimate weapon within the first disc. Yeah. Um, all it takes is several hours worth of grinding that game. <laughs> um, but, and a lot of people probably think too, oh, you know, there's no need for the ultimate weapon. There is. There is a need. <laughs> that, that weapon is is insane the um the special abilities or the limit breaks that you get um the way that they change for all of the characters i think except for except for zell sylphie 
and Renoa. Oh no, actually it's only Squall, I've just realized. It's literally only Squall. Um, his limit breaks <laughs> his limit breaks are determined by the weapon in which you have. So he uses Gunblade, but you upgrade that Gunblade, and the more you upgrade it, the more abilities you get. And when you get that Lionheart Blade, not only is it the most badass looking blade in existence, you get the ability called Lionheart, in which you just savagely wreck your enemies. It hits the enemy, what, 12 times? Yeah, and it's all like 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Yeah. And mm. it's, it's, it's like a better Omni Slash. Sorry, Cloud. Yeah. Sells, bruh. Yeah, but Squall is just better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, he's going to be added into, into Smash before Waluigi. Oh, uh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised, but I'd be happy with it. <laughs> I would. I I genuinely would take Squall over Waluigi, although there's not many people I'd say that about at the moment. There's not many characters I'd say that about over Waluigi. I'm I'm serious. A year simp for Squall. You'll see. You'll see them all be destroyed once they add in Waluigi. <laughs> you know, I, I I hope I hope that they add Waluigi and they make him the weakest character, just so <laughs> just so people can be disappointed and be like, why did we want this? Nah, you're simply not worthy. <laughs> only the best can beat as Waluigi because he's so strong. The only he has person to be worthy. The only person that would come in and beat him would be Doom Guy. <laughs> no, not even Doom. Nah, Doom Waluigi's Guy. Too Doom Guy would end him. Doom Guy would end a lot of things. Yeah, this is true. Um, but um, but for those of you who haven't tried the Final Fantasy games, definitely do it. There's 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 very different Final Fantasy games for very different people. Um, for instance, if you're a kid, uh, there is a Final Fantasy Rhythms game for the 3DS and for the DS, um, and they were good. I actually thoroughly enjoyed those. Um, I was I was actually impressed. As well as Aaron? Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you did. Sorry, bro. Um, Feeling with this bike. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, the, the rhythm games were really good. They were... Uh, the first one was a little bit unresponsive, if I'm honest. But, um, but the second one was very, very good. And you get to hear those wicked, wicked soundtracks. Now, all of the soundtracks up to Final Fantasy X-2... Actually, maybe X-2... Let me just check. FF10 2 soundtrack was written by... No, okay. So Final Fantasies, at least from Final Fantasy 7 through to 9... Sorry, and, uh, and 10. Final Fantasy 7 through 10 were written by a gentleman by the name of Nobuyo Matsu. And that man knows how to put emotion in his music. Oh yeah, like some of the greatest pieces. Um, there's the uh, the love song, or is it love grows? Love grows by Nobuo Yamatsu from Final Fantasy VIII. There's Tazanakand from Final Fantasy VII. There's One Winged Angel from. Uh, sorry, mm. no, Tazanakand was Final Fantasy X. Sorry, not Seven. One Winged Angel from Seven. Um, even Aerith theme in Final Fantasy Seven as well was just heartbreaking especially when after yeah uh, cloud so, drowned her yes now <laughs> and uh, and immediately after Aerith seem plays and you fight ultimesia i mean jim uh, Jim, i mean genova and so genova is also Aerith as well as well yes uh, as well <laughs> yes um and you Genial know what crack yeah i know i know but Genova, that Genova fight with Aerith's theme playing in the background is the most heart wrenching thing ever. Imagine it with now the realization that you're a murderer. Now murder this one too. Yeah. Was the sorceress in eight that they go to kill? Was that Adia? Yeah. 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 Adia Kramer, her name is. Might be a little bit of a spoiler for those who remember the name during the game, but who cares? We've spoiled a lot. At this point, old, it's like, an old ass game. It is an it is twenty-one old game. Twenty-one years spoilers. old. Twenty-one years old. But is there anything else anybody would like to say about the Final Fantasy franchise? 
I'm definitely going to play um, 16. <laughs> oh, 16. 100%, yeah. I just hope it lives up to 15. I thoroughly enjoyed 15. Um, yeah. Why don't we just end it on quick speculations on how 16 is going to play out? Sure. Because we don't have a top 10 thing for this time, do we? No, we top don't. Top 10 Final Fantasy. <laughs> Uh yeah okay uh no Go um oh uh, look I could I could do a top ten um summons from uh, Final Fantasy ooh number one Barrett um <laughs> Barrett is now <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what I'm gonna do that I'm gonna I'm gonna whip up a top ten summons from um from Final Fantasy um, yeah you don't understand. He's the best boy. He's 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 my he's such a good guy. He deserves to be your son. <laughs> he just transcends. Oh he yeah, should. man. Oh yeah, bro. I can't believe he had to lower himself at such a level to team up with Cloud. <laughs> Cloud should be so lucky to have Barrett on his team. Yeah. Thanks, too edgy. Too much. Yeah. Too much edge, bro. You gotta soften out that edge with uh, some Barrett. <laughs> um, should I limit this top ten to um, Final Fantasy VIII summons? Are there ones that aren't in Final Fantasy? Uh, in Final Fantasy VIII, sorry, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some that aren't in Final Fantasy. I was. Um... Yeah, there there are some that aren't. I'm gonna limit it to the Final Fantasy VIII ones because the ones that are in Final Fantasy VIII. They're usually pretty boss when it comes to future games as well. So I'll, I'm going to limit it to the Final Fantasy VIII summons. Yeah, I just really like what they're doing with Final Fantasy sixteen or what they're showing in the trailer. Like, the step back from technology and more on the fantasy. It is, like we said multiple times, is a good touch. Mm. It definitely flows better with the magic as well. Yeah. I don't think I've played a Final Fantasy game exactly in this time era with this Magic 5. So... Okay. Yes. Jim, you done? Yeah. That was quick. Shit. Bro, um, I know the summons like like this, bro. <laughs> best okay. Boy. I think I know what your best boy is. I uh, Maybe. <laughs> maybe you do. Number 10. Okay, so there's a couple I have to, I have, I have to cut out um, because there's 16 of them. Okay, so there's a couple I have to, I have to cut out. But um, number 10, I would have to say, um, would be my boy Carbuncle. The cutest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this little guy just pops out of a hole in the ground and he protects you from all magic. Yeah. He is the sickest. Um, nine. Now, oh shit, there's so many to choose from here. It's, it, it, it is a little bit insane. Nine, I'm going to go with Pandemonium. Uh, this massive creature that just sucks everybody into its windbag. It's almost like a bagpipe on its side. Sucks all of the creatures into that and then blows them out. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty sick. I ain't going to lie. Number seven, we have Leviathan. The Leviathan summon was not great, but uh, but better than the other two. Um, I, I think I think marginally. Mm. So we're coming to the last six now. I I kind of want to put Quetzalcoatl, Shiver, and Ifrit as one because Why they are. One? Sorry. Why is one? Because they're the ones that are, like, integral to all of the games. Except for Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl can be interchanged for heaps of different uh, electric gods. Like, for Final Fantasy thirteen, instead of Quetzalcoatl, you've got Odin. In fifteen, you've got Rama. But Ifrit and Shiva are the... Who was the, who was the lightning one in ten? I can't remember. Valifor. Odin. Odin. Was it? Was it? Oh, yeah, Valifor. Yeah, 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 I thought it was Valifor. How replaceable the lightning one is. No, 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 no. It wasn't it Ixion, the, the horse? Sorry, yes, it was Ixion. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Ixion's Rama's horse. Okay. Believe it or not. Um, and then we're going to get to the top five, okay? So the five, there's... Um, oh, man. Some people are going to hate me for this. 
I hate Brothers, so that's not in there. I hate Tonberry, so I ha- so that's out. The Cactor is out as well. I fucking hate that. Oh, damn, that's, I was going to say, that's your best boy, Cactor. No, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> it, it, it it's a rough. series staple. It is. The the Tornberry summon gives you some really good abilities that help you through the game, but for, as a summon, it is useless. It is awful. You do not want it. Um, but the ability to level up an enemy or level them down determine, to determine what their loot will be is actually really helpful. But number it's five. A great utility. It is, 100%. Number five. Huh. All right. Way to keep me in suspense. Number five, we have Brothers. Ooh. Brothers is sick. They are these two large, well, uh, one large, one small Minotaur. The small one's the elder brother. Um, as it should be. As it should be. And uh, they come, they're an earth based um, uh, guardian force. And I, I love them. Their dynamic is fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. I'm reading them now. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. Uh, this one actually is hard for me, um, for number four. Uh, but I'm going to go with Alexander for number four. Alexander is this large machine fortress that comes out and obliterates. Three? Um, is... Three is Cerberus. Cerberus is an awesome three-headed dog. It comes out and it uses a, a, a magic on your party that allows you to cast double and triple magic. So if you use your action to cast fire, you can do it three times for the cost of one, I believe. And yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. I love it. I love, I love Cerberus. Cerberus is awesome. I've miscalculated. There are three left that I want to put in here. <laughs> actually, no, this is actually okay. This is actually okay because my number one is tied, actually. All right. I feel Num- like I know what your number one is. Number two is Diablos. Mm-hmm. Diablos is sick. Diablos does percentage damage. I believe it's a 25% or 50%, something like that. Whatever, however much, however much health they have remaining, it will take them down a percentage. It doesn't do any form of element. It's just a percentage thing. My tide number one. Uh, Bahamut. Of course. And Eden. Now, Ooh. I would put Eden a little bit further up the list, I think, than Bahamut, if I'm honest, now that I think about it. Because if you have a look at the garden in which you are situated at the start of the game... Later on, those, that garden begins flying. Also, Galbadia Garden begins flying. Eden looks exactly the same as Garden because it is the... Anybody? Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. I nearly slammed, on, I nearly slammed my hand on the, ta- on the desk but my cat's sleeping right in front of me. But yeah. is it Geneva? No, it's not. It's fucking the Garden of Eden, you, you bitch. Yeah, of course it is. And it's just this awesome, awesome tie-in, which actually you can fight Eden now in Final Fantasy XIV. Ah. It's there and you can fight it. And I kind of want why, to... Why? How could you? Well, because the power of Genova allows for anything to happen. Admitting that. Eden is Genova. Eden is Genova. Confirmed. <laughs> Genova is apparently everything now. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I do believe that that will bring us to the end of our Final Fantasy podcast. Um, I I would like to thank you all for, for watching and uh, thank you so much for sticking around and uh, hopefully you, t- you tune in for next week's next week's one as well uh thank you ryan for joining us thanks for having me guys i, I love you
I love you too. Oh, this is going online. You. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think of who the wedding's actually going to be for. Oh, bro. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're... On, on the letter, it's going to be Jim and Liz. But for, we, we, we know. for sure, we're adding the stipulation of if anybody does not agree to this union, and then that's Ryan's chance if he loves me. Yeah, yeah. and then Jim's going to walk up next to him and sit down next to him and just wait. <laughs> <laughs> the just, way just I say James and Lizzie are going to be facing each other at the altar, and I'm going to be thrusting James right. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to have trouble looking at Liz. He'll be too scared on you. I... Oh, you look wonderful in the suit. <laughs> You'd make a lovely rye frame. Um, <laughs> so you guys have got to watch The Gentleman. That is such a good movie. Um, but uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, we're probably going to stream some Phasmophobia. Um, yes. If, if that works. And Ryan, do you have Phasmophobia yet? I uh, will be getting it because you keep freaking pestering me. Yay! We finally have a four man. Man, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. This is gonna be oh, real good. Screams to as, be had. As oh. long as as long as I maintain the whole thing of I'm currently buying all of the shit, I will keep it in the van and I will stay in the van. You bitch. <laughs> no, it's not even that. Like I'll come in and help you guys set things up, but we need to like yeah. if I've got all and of the gear. And Jim be in there past a five minute. Oh no! Fuck no! Once <laughs> <laughs> the fight, once the time is out, he's <laughs> once the time the is out, I'm out. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, because the thing is, Ryan, if you go in there with all of your gear, you lose your gear if you die. Yeah. So it, it's all gone at that point. So um, and I, I, so I I'm, I'm, the, I'm the only one that hasn't fine. died. Yeah. But no, um, the most. Yeah. actually, 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 I think it's now tied with me and Jack. Possibly, yeah. Right. Like, I think you may be one in the lead. Yeah. Like, either way, like, either way, we we've died quite a bit. Yeah. Yes. Like, I think three, and maybe you four times. Maybe either way, so. but uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hopefully, to see you. Hope hope to see you in said stream. Okay. Bye bye. Goodbye for real. <laughs> oh god. And then what the fuck, Ryan? This is the end.